Good afternoon and welcome back to the main interview room here at NRG Stadium in Houston and the Final Four. We have a few news conferences coming up here in the main interview room. We're going to have the USBWA Oscar Robertson Player of the Year news conference with Luke DeCock of the Raleigh News and Observer on behalf of the USBWA. Following that news conference, we're going to have the Associated Press Player of the Year news conference and the Associated Press Coach of the Year news conference. If you're joining us here in the main interview room, I invite you now to please silence your cell phone. These news conferences are somewhat different than most of the news conferences we have in here, similar to the Hall of Fame news conference that we just had. You are allowed to not only shoot photos, but you can also shoot video. You can go live on your phone to your favorite social media platform. Jeff Nelson's favorite is TikTok. <laughs> You can choose your favorite and go live on that. We'll also take a few questions over Zoom if there are any. We have a couple of people on right now. But the main difference between the post-game and pre-game NCAA press conferences and this one is you can shoot video, you can go live, you can do anything that makes you comfortable, happy, and excited with your coverage this afternoon. As with all of our news conferences here in the main interview room, the transcripts will be available immediately via ASAP. We'll have video posted shortly after at ncaa.veritone.com. I believe this one's streaming live not only on Zoom but on YouTube as well. Our player of the year is here. Luke is here as well. And here we are to begin the USBWA Oscar Robertson Player of the Year News Conference representing the USBWA from the Raleigh News and Observer, Luke DeCock. Luke. Thank you, Mark. Um, again, my name is Luke DeCock. I'm the 67th president of the United States Basketball Writers Association and a sports columnist with the Raleigh News and Observer. It's my pleasure today to announce the winner of the 2023 Oscar Robertson Trophy, awarded annually since 1959 to the outstanding player in men's college basketball. And this year's winner is Purdue forward Zach Eady, who will receive the actual trophy uh, at our ceremony in St. Louis in two weeks. And I know Zach would prefer to be in Houston under slightly different circumstances, but let that take nothing away from one of the finest individual seasons by a big man in recent history, doing things nobody has done since David Robinson, finishing six nationally in scoring at 22.3 points per game, second rebounding first in double doubles to go with Big Ten Player of the Year honors and the Big Ten regular season and tournament championships. He's the second Purdue player to win the Oscar, joining Glenn Robinson in 1994. And Glenn was the big dog, but I can tell you sitting up here, nothing seems that big compared to Zach. Um, and as someone who also covers the NHL and has watched the Dano Char up close, I'm fascinated by what would have happened if you'd chosen hockey instead of basketball because the world needs more seven foot four defensemen. But we're here to celebrate one of the most remarkable basketball seasons we've seen from any player at any position. Zach, congratulations. And what does it mean to you to be recognized as the best player in college basketball? Uh, it's great, you know, it validates uh, kind of all the work I've put in through my, over my three years at Purdue. Uh, it validates all the long nights I stayed um, when no one was watching. It validates all the long nights with, with uh, one of our coaches, Coach Brantley. Um, you know, staying two or three hours after practice, watching film with him, ice tubbing, getting shots up. Um, it, it validates everything. Um, it makes me obviously want to work harder, keep doubling down, um, and see just kind of where, where it can all take me. Yeah. Go, going into the season, did you have the sense that this was something that could be possible for you? Um, it was always something that kind of like, uh, obviously that's something that everyone thinks about, um, kind of what 
their season could be. Uh, I had no idea going into the season uh, what, what would be in store for me. I think um, the season could have been basically everything I hoped for, um, besides obviously the way it ended. Uh, but up until that point, it was uh, it, it was great. It was, it was a great season. Um, we outperformed all expectations. Um, I, I, I was, I was uh, able to be a big part of that. My teammates really helped me through it. Um, my coaches really helped me through it. My family helped me through it. Um, this isn't just ever. This, it was never just me. This wasn't uh, my award. This isn't, this isn't my award. Um, this is kind of. Um, I'm just the face of it. But there's so many good people behind me that really helped me, and I, I wouldn't be able to be here without them. You mentioned the work that you put in, but your path to this point has been so unique. Where you grew up, your late sort of adoption of basketball. Does this put in perspective, sort of, you know, your journey and and how how the the sort of different route you've taken to get here? Yeah, um, kind of shows that you don't have to uh, be forced into a sport when you're a young kid to be good at it. Um, I think I kind of found my way. Uh, basketball almost found me a little bit, um, but I found my way. Um, my past unique, uh, very probably very different than the past winners of this award, but um, it, it was my own path, and I'm very proud of it. We're now ready for your questions for Zach or Luke. If you have a question, please raise your hand. One of our microphone attendants will make their way in your direction. We'll ask that you please state your name and media outlet before you present your question. Jen, come up a couple rows for me. That'd be great. On your right, there's our first question. Uh, Mike Carmen, goldenblack.com. Zach, when you won Big Ten Player of the Year, I think you took part of the day to kind of reflect on your journey. Now that you've added a growing list of National Player of the Year honors to your to your resume, I mean, how, how is this all sinking in for you? Um, it's crazy. Uh, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't even feel real sometimes. Um, I think it's something that I'll only really be able to appreciate kind of in a few years when I look back on it. Because um, right now, living through it, it just feel, it feels crazy. I don't, it's hard to, it's hard to take in. I'm trying to take it all in, but uh, it's, it's definitely tough. It's it's um, it's crazy to kind of think of my name in the conversation of, of the past legends, especially at Purdue, like Glenn Robinson, John Wooden, uh, the past like men's basketball legends, um, and think that my name is going to be next to them uh, all time in history. Um, so it, it, it's uh, it's a surreal feeling. Continuing with questions for Zach or Luke, we'll go up front to the left. Hi, Zach. Steve Futterman from CBS News. Congratulations. I had two questions for you. I wanted to ask, was there something that's happened in the last 18 months or so? You seem to make such big strides. Was there a new comfort level you found in the last season, 18 months, that really drove you? I mean, you were playing excellently before, but this year you took it to a new level, and I find sometimes you talk to players, they say that something just clicked. You may not even be able to explain, but just something was working this year. Would you feel that way, or am I reading too much into it? Um, I'm not sure. Um, obviously, the game slows down a little bit as I started playing it more. Um, kind of when I first started college, everything was moving really fast. It was my third year of basketball, um, so everything was moving crazy fast. I didn't really know what to do. I was just trying to kind of hang on for dear life. Um, so I think kind of the more I started playing basketball, the more the game slowed down, the more my understanding grew and, and kind of the easier the game got, but I don't think anything ever really clicked. Uh, I think kind of every game I had to go out and I had to fight for every possession. I don't think it ever really just was like, I could put it on cruise control and I was good. Uh, I always kind of really had to go out there and fight. Steve, quick follow, because we have other questions. Uh, the interest in China, I know Elaine Gu, the, uh, the Olympian has had enormous success over there. Is there a great deal of interest in China for you and our but you see potential marketing opportunities? I know I'm jumping way ahead, but what do you see? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my heritage. I'm proud to be Canadian. I'm proud to be Chinese. I'm proud of all of it. Um, I'm not, I don't look at China as a marketing opportunity. I just look at it as part of my heritage. I look at something that I'm, I'm really proud of um, and something that a uh, relationship that I'm definitely uh, into growing uh, down the road. Steve, we got to move to other not questions. Sure. We'll uh -huh. get to you at the end if we can. To the back of the room on the left. Isaac Borman, Major Madness. Zach, I kind of I kind of wanted to ask, um, you know, what's the future looking like for you? Is it the NBA draft right now, or is it another year at Purdue? I have no clue. That's a good answer. Let's go to the back of the room center. Robert Lestella with FAU Owl Radio. Zach, um, your mom was a uh, tried out for the Toronto National Basketball Team. It didn't work out. How has it been for you to be able to live your dream? Um, 
and like follow your steps? Um, it's crazy. Um, kind of, I, I tried out for the Canadian team two years in a row, and I got cut just as well. Um, so it's kind of been crazy living through it, kind of going through it. Um, all credit to her. She she played basketball. She loved basketball, but she never forced me into playing basketball at all. She let me choose, and then basketball came to me, and now I'm able to kind of uh, do some things that she wasn't really able to. We need a comment from Zach's mom. <laughs> <laughs> On the left of the aisle, toward the back. Hey, Zach. Uh, Luke Cheney with Lightfall Sports. Can you just talk about the impact that Coach Painter has had on you, you know, ever since he started recruiting you to, you know, work? Um, it's been great. Um, you kind of seen it on the court, but it's not just been on the court. It's been off the court. He's helped me as a person. Um, that's kind of always been his, his big thing, kind of making not only great basketball players, but great people. I think that's really something that he's helped me with. Um, it, it's been incredible, you know, him and all the coaching staff, all the coaches that have been around. Um, Coach Brantley really helped me. Coach Lutz recruited me. He's at Texas A&M Corpus Christi right now, but um, he's he, he helped me uh, – in tons of ways. PJ helps me in tons of ways. Our co current coaches, Coach Coach T and Coach Lusk, they help me in tons of ways. It's, 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 a, it's been all the coaches that have really, really been behind me and that have always supported me. All the way up front to the left. <clears throat> Justin Deegan, Orange Blossom Sports. Congrats on the dominant season this year. I have a question pertaining to this is pretty much the, the peak uh, an individual player can get in the college uh, basketball sport. How do you feel this will open opportunities, and how have you felt the opportunities that you've already had, and just kind of your general feeling on NIL and its current state right now? Um, I'm not really going to speak about NIL. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing to get paid. I think it can be a little bit um, misused sometimes, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I think, uh, like, like you said, it's, it's, a, it's obviously great to kind of be able to uh, be at the, like you said, peak of college basketball. Um, but it's, it's not like it stops from here. It's not like I can't get better from here. It's not like I can't grow from here. Um, I still feel like I have a lot a lot, a lot to do, a lot to show. Um, but it's great to kind of be able to stand here today. Center of the room, third row. Zach, Jerry Lee with the junior, the college sports support. Zach, it was kind of mentioned early on about uh, your transition from hockey to uh, basketball. How did you start in hockey, and what was the transition, and how has it helped you with your basketball skills? Uh, I think it's kind of helped me um, just develop a full sports background, um, like kind of have, have different skills uh, from different sports that have really translated over to basketball for me. Um, you know, from hockey, I got kind of like big legs. I got a, a, good, a good, strong base. Um, from baseball, I got kind of like the touch from my fingers. Um, I can really, like like when you're pitching a fastball, um, the last two fingers to touch the ball are these two, and then when you're shooting a basketball, it's the same thing. So I think my touch is kind of naturally developed in baseball, and that really helped me in basketball. Um, but uh, also just kind of like not being burnt out. Like I still really love this sport. Uh, I think people that really play it from a young age, they might be kind of done with it and over it, but I'm, I'm still loving this sport. I'm still so excited every day to go to practice, stuff like that. Um, and um, it's... it's it's definitely made me very unique in the space. One row back. Uh, Zach, uh, Luke had mentioned that you'd done some things that hadn't really been seen in college basketball since David Robinson. I know Admiral's a little bit ahead of your time, but how much do you know about Robinson and his contributions, and what does it kind of mean to you to be mentioned in the same sentence as somebody that was so impactful? I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, it's, kind of, it's crazy whenever your name gets mentioned in the same space as all of Hall of Famers. Um, you know, obviously he did kind of basically everything that he could in the league. He won MVP, he won finals, won, he did everything. Um, so to be able to be compared to him, uh, it's, it's an honor. Uh, we're going to thank Luke and thank Zach for joining us here. In about 90 seconds, Zach is going to return for the next news conference which is the Associated Press Coach of the Year. Luke, you want to say anything to wrap everything up? No, I just, uh, as I said, we're going to give Zach the actual trophy in two weeks at the Missouri Ad Athletic Club at our, our annual awards banquet, and it's just terrific to have Zach here and such a deserving and, and, uh, a deserving and, and just winner of this trophy. So thank you, Zach. Thank you. Congratulations, Zach. Thank you, Luke. And all our best from the main interview room here at the Final Four to the Big O.
I know I got you. Our Associated Press Coach of the Year and Player of the Year news conference is coming up next. We're just going to change out the tap waters on the dais. Basically, 130 to 155. Right now, it's 128. I can do whatever way you want to do it. Well, why don't we use that as like a okay. I don't think it affects the ball because it's more of a water force. Okay. Right now. Yeah. I'm okay for right now. Barry, yours went through. At this time, we'd like to welcome Zach Eady back as the Associated Press Player of the Year, and we'd like to introduce from the AP, Barry Bedlin. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, to the NCAA for allowing us to present our award as well. I mean, uh, it's kind of Groundhog Day for Zach here, uh, probably this whole weekend uh, for all the awards he's getting. I'm, I'm Barry Bedlin, Sports Director for the Associated Press. I always joke that I'm selected to do this job because of my height. Uh, I'm almost 6'6", and up until now, I, you know, I, for posing for photos with the recipient, it, it balanced out quite nicely, but this isn't fair, uh, how tall he is. Um, uh, Zach, actually, I, I, I was just curious, uh, Zach is the tallest recipient of the AP uh, College Basketball Player of the Year Award uh, since Ralph Sampson, which seems mm -hmm. appropriate since we're in Houston. Um, since 1967, the recipient of this award has been selected by the same panel of journalists that decides the weekly AP Top 25 that season. Voting for the award is conducted at the end of the regular season, before the start of the NCAA tournament. Past recipients, I mentioned Ralph Sam Sampson, include Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Louis Alcender, now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Walton, and David Robinson, to name a few. This year's recipient becomes only the second player from Purdue to receive the trophy, the other being Glenn <coughs> Robinson in 1994. The seven foot four Canadian was named an unanimous AP All-American and the Big Ten Player of the Year after leading the nation with 26 double-doubles. He averaged more than 22 points, nearly 13 rebounds and two blocks per game. He led the Boilermakers to their first outright Big Ten regular season title since 2017 and the conference tournament title as well. And as mentioned during the previous news conference, he is the first player in nearly 40 years since Navy's David Robinson to have at least 750 points, 450 rebounds, and 50 block shots in a season. This year's AP Men's College Basketball Player of the Year is Purdue's Zach Eady. So we'll go ahead and we'll pose. Do I hold it or both hold it? Yeah, we can both hold it then. Can you get us both in the frame, or? <laughs> all right. Let us know when everybody's good. We'll assume they are. So yeah, I think we're all good. Okay. So Zach, we allow you to. I mean, I know you just. Uh, <laughs> you probably have the same speech, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, it's an honor. Um, to kind of have my name mentioned uh, with some of the all-time greats. Um, David Robinson, kind of my name mentioned with him, um, and then Purdue greats as well, like Glenn Robinson, John Wooden. Um, you know, when I think when I think back to goes guys like that, um, you know, you think of like all their stories, all the, everything you've heard about them, and then now to think that uh, maybe one day people might be talking about me like that, it's it's a crazy feeling. Um, something that I'm soaking in, um, something that um, I really appreciate. But I I know I wouldn't be here without the people around me. Uh, without my family, without my coaching staff, without my teammates, 
um, supported me every step of the way. I, I don't know how it would have turned out um, uh, when I got to when I first got to Purdue. Um, I, I was nowhere near the the person or player that I am now. Um, I think Coach Painter and my teammates have really helped me with that, and that's something I'm forever grateful uh, to them for. Great. If you have a question for Zach or Barry, please raise your hand. Let's start all the way in the back, on the left. Deshaun Tate from Sports Radio, 92.9 The Game in Atlanta. Congratulations to you, Zach. Um, what do you think that it says that you are the third consecutive recipient of someone who played the center position and I guess arguable five consecutive years for a front court player for a position that many people consider to be somewhat extinct in this current game of basketball? What do you think that that says um, about you know being able to be um, someone who's getting that award? Um, I mean, it's crazy. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know that, that basically five front court players have won in a row. Um, it kind of shows how uh, the big man's still important in the game, um, shows how the big man can affect the game. Um, but yeah, that's it's a, it's a cool fact. The next question's on the right side of the room. Jerry? Hi, Jerry Palm with CBS. So you grew up playing hockey and baseball, but did you follow basketball as a fan? Did you have a favorite team or favorite players? Uh, I would watch the NBA, obviously, because I was in Toronto, so I'd watch the Raptors. Um, but, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really follow basketball at all because I, I didn't play. I didn't, didn't have any interest in it at all. Next question is to the right of the aisle, Associated Press. Hi, uh, Christy Rican from the Associated Press. Kind of a silly question, but... Where, where are you going to put all these trophies? <laughs> I have no idea. The Oscar Robertson was actually shaped like Oscar, too. It's kind of I don't know air. where I'm going to put that one. Midair. You need a unique shelving unit. It's life size, though, right? Isn't it life size? It, yeah, I think it's life size. <laughs> yeah, no, I live, I live in college house. I don't know where I'm going to put these things. That's, that's why it was only available over Zoom today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the weight. Uh, any further questions for Zach or Barry? With that, we'd like to thank Barry, and we'd like to congratulate Zach once again on being the Associated Press Player of the Year. Thank you. Our Associated Press Coach of the Year news conference is next. We'll begin that in just a moment.
We'll begin our Associated Press Coach of the Year news conference in just a moment. Barry Bedlin from the AP will return to the dais with our Coach of the Year. Once again, during this news conference, you may shoot video. You may always shoot still photos. You can go live on your favorite social media platform. You can record the video and upload it later. It's all up to you. That's coming up next with the Associated Press Coach of the Year. As we begin our Associated Press Coach of the Year news conference, we're once again joined by Barry Bedlin of the Associated Press. Barry. It's my pleasure today to present the AP Men's College Basketball Coach of the Year. Since 1967, the recipient of this award has been selected by the same panel of journalists that decides the weekly AP Top 25. Voting for the award is conducted at the end of the season before the start of the NCAA tournament. Past recipients include John Wooden, Bob Knight, Roy Williams, Bill Self, and Jim Larinaga. This year's award winner is the second for Marquette University, with the other being Al McGuire, in only the fifth year of the award, back in 1971. In the 56 years of this award, this year's coach is also only the third Big East coach to receive it, with the others being UConn's Jim Calhoun and Pitt's Ben Howland. This year, this coach led one of the regular season's biggest surprises. Probably wasn't a surprise to him. Uh, Marquette was picked by the Big East coaches to finish ninth in the 11-team league. The team didn't receive a single vote in the preseason AP Top 25. However, this coach, which he's done before at other schools, channeled all that to motivate his Golden Eagles to a record season leading the team to a program-high 29 wins, clinching both the conference's regular season and tournament titles for the first time, and Marquette also earned a number two seed in the NCAA tournament, its highest ever. It's my pleasure today to, to present AP's Men's College Basketball Coach of the Year, Shaka Smart. What you need? All right. Coach, we'll hand it over to you to have some remarks. First of all, I want to say thank you to the AP voters um, for two things. One, not including us in your preseason <laughs> <laughs> top 25. Um, but I want to say thank you for um, you know voting me coach of the year. Uh, as we all know, any coach of the year honor is, is truly a team award. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a coach of the year as great as those coaches are that we just rattled off. Um, that's won an award like this without a great group of players that believed in that coach's plan and followed that process of what goes into winning. So thank you to the AP. Um, I want to say thank you also to uh, all the guys that taught me what coaching is all about. Uh, I don't really come from much of a coaching background um, other than I love to play the game. And my high school coach encouraged me to think strategically. He's, he encouraged me to think like a coach, and he got me involved in coaching young kids. His name's Kevin Bavery, and uh, I owe him a debt of gratitude because he got me thinking this way. Uh, my college coach, Bill Brown, left after my freshman year. It was one of the worst days of my life. Um, but he sparked something in me that um, you know, has me sitting up here today. He said, hey, when you get done playing, you can come work for me at this new school that I'm heading off to. And so that's exactly what I did. And those guys, along with Oliver Purnell, Keith Dambrot, Dan Hipsher, Billy Donovan, they taught me everything that goes into what I do every day. 
Um, and then probably the most important coach in my life was my mom, uh, Monica King. She didn't know a thing about basketball, but she taught me a lot about relationships, which is the foundation for our program. It's how we do things. And we still believe in 2023 that you can win big that way when you care about each other and you care about pouring into each other to go do something special as a group. If you have a question for Coach Smart, the Associated Press Coach of the Year, or Barry, also <laughs> yeah, a sports writer of the year <laughs> sure. at different times, including this year, no, 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 uh, just no. raise your hand. I think we have one from John Fanta all the way up front and to the left. John Fanta from Fox Sports. Shaka, the, the identity of this team, when you think about coming to Madison Square Garden last October, and, and seeing where you were selected, seeing all this stuff, it's one thing for a group to talk about how they're going to prove people wrong. It's another thing to actually do it and act upon it. What was in the group's DNA that led them to doing that and so much more, winning Big East championships? Well, you remember, John, what Tyler Kolick said on that same day. Uh, so that's what was in our DNA. Uh, but I think even more importantly than, than proving anyone wrong, was proving ourselves right and was pouring into each other to make each other better. Our, our core values are relationships, growth, and victory. And growth is incredibly important to any team that wants to be playing here in the last weekend of the season or wants to win a regular season championship or a conference championship. So for us, you know, maybe at some point we were the ninth best team, but not when the games were played. And that's what really matters. And our guys grew. They really focused on uh, what goes into winning as opposed to focusing on all the other things that tend to surround sports these days. Uh, I think there's never been a time when there's been more diversity in how people go about coaching and people go about playing. And I think the way that our guys went about this season is a testament to the way that we've chosen to go about it. Continuing with questions for Coach Smart, let's go all the way back to the left. Mike? Uh, Mike LaPresti, NCAA.com. Shaka, you're very familiar with a team getting to the Final Four that people maybe didn't expect to get there. When you look at this this year and all the surprises, was it in a way born from the age of George Mason and VCU and Butler? Did that sort of start the journey in any way to where we are now? For sure. It absolutely did. And, um, you know, what one of these teams is going to do um, that those teams that you mentioned have not done yet is win the whole thing. Uh, I, I remember I worked for a guy named Keith Dambrot. At, at University of Akron. That's where I met my wife, Maya. So it was the most important stop in my coaching journey. And he used to always say, hey, one of these years, a mid-level team is going to win the whole thing. And I would look at him like, you're nuts, man. Uh, but then when I got to VCU, it was like, hey, let's go after it. And I think what you see from these teams, whether it's FAU um, San Diego State is certainly not a mid-major team. I mean, they've been terrific for a long, long time. Um, but these teams have found a way to really capture all the things that go into winning throughout the season and then most importantly at the right time. And the teams that do that because it's a single elimination tournament, they advance. And a team like us, you know, we had a record-breaking regular season season we won our, our league tournament, but the reality is the reason I'm sitting here as opposed to being with my team today preparing for a game tonight is because maybe we didn't play our best game the la our last game of the year, and that's how this tournament works. Coach, uh, about an hour ago, we had Dwayne Wade up here as part of the 2023 class in the Hall of Fame. It's the 20-year anniversary of Marquette's 2003 run with Dwayne as the head coach of Marquette now. What does that mean to you? Did you see Dwayne? Does, is he around? You know, tell yeah. us what that means. Got a chance to spend some time with Dwayne uh, w right after he got off the dais here. And first of all, standing in the back 
and looking at, at that collection of basketball royalty uh, was very humbling for me, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then to be able to have the relationship that we have with Dwayne Wade and the way that he feels about Marquette, I still remember sitting in my little living room in Dayton, Ohio, watching Dwayne Wade put up a triple-double against Kentucky to go to the Final Four in 2003. And... Now to be able to coach at his school is pretty cool. Dwayne Wade is a guy that I think for someone that's that level of a superstar, he's got incredible humility, and he truly cares about where he came from. He's been on our campus four times in the last calendar year. He spoke at graduation. He came back and celebrated his Final Four team multiple times. He came back and spent time with his teammates, with our players, with other folks on campus. And, you know, I'm really, really grateful for the connection that we have with him because I look at him and I see a guy who literally is one of the top guys to ever do it at that position. Any other questions for Coach Smart? Coach, we have one over Zoom. We're going to do our first uh, technology flex of the day and All right. see if we can pull this one off. Patrick Waring of the NBS Sports Hour. You're on. Hey, Coach. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you, you know, you talked about being encouraged uh, to get into coaching after you finished playing. What Was there a moment that it really hit you, though, that you were like, hey, you know, I'm good at this. I think this is what's going to be my plan. <laughs> That's a great question. You know, I was a graduate assistant at a school called California University of Pennsylvania. And it's a Division II school. I was 22 years old. Our whole starting lineup was older than me because in, in Division II, sometimes there's guys that have bounced around a little bit. And I actually lived with my boss, a gentleman by the name of Bill Brown, who had been my college coach. And every day we would drive to the office and he would ask me, are you sure you want to do this? You know, is this, is this really what you want to do? And I remember feeling slightly offended every time he would ask me that question because I felt like I was doing it. I'm already doing it. What do you mean? I'm in this. I'm with you. We're trying to go after winning. We're trying to make these guys better. What he meant was when you're young, 22, 23, 24 years old, you can change your mind. You can go do something else. But... I've never thought about doing anything else because uh, the opportunity to be a part of a team and be a part of something uh, larger than any of us, the opportunity to go after winning, uh, the opportunity to compete in really cool venues, you know, whether it's some Division II school in Pennsylvania or whether it's coaching at a place like UConn, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's, it's been a thrill for me. And I used to be the young coach. Now I guess I'm the middle-aged coach. Um, but I'm just grateful for the opportunity to continue doing it. Coach, we have a follow-up from Patrick there. We're going to unmute him again. Go ahead, Patrick. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, sir. I, oh, I had my hand up still. <laughs> Accidentally. We're, we're going to mute Patrick, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to go to John Fanta. Thank you, Patrick. Shaka was curious to get your thoughts on UConn, having played them three times, and what makes them so dangerous and what your thoughts are on the Big East in general. The Big East is awesome. It's my favorite league that I've coached in, and what's special about the Big East compared to other leagues is basketball, which is what we're all here for. When you go to Providence or you go to Seton Hall or you go to Villanova or any school in the Big East, you can feel how special and meaningful that game is to so many people. It's probably like football at Ohio State or Michigan. And that's our sport in our league. Uh, in terms of UConn, there's been multiple times this season where I've thought, they have the best team in the country. Um, starting off in November and December when they were, you know, running through their non-conference schedule and, you know, at, at various times in conference play, uh, including when they 
shellacked us at their place. Um, we were fortunate to beat them twice. Those games were, were not easy. Um, I'm still in awe of what our guys were able to do to accomplish those wins. Uh, but I think the reality is with UConn, you've got three incredibly special players in Sonogo, Hawkins, and Jackson. And when those guys are all playing well, and not to take away from any other guys on their team because they have some terrific role guys, uh, they've got a point guard who had a triple-double against us who's not one of those three guys. Uh, but when those three guys are playing well, they're not losing. They will win both games here if those guys continue to play the way they're playing. And Andre, da Andre Jackson especially, he's just a real, real problem when he's on the floor and he's playing with great confidence. So it's been fun to be in the Big East with them this year. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch them. I wish we were out here competing against them. Is there a final question for Coach Smart? With no more questions, we want to congratulate Coach Smart and thank him for joining us here, and thank you to Barry as well. Thank you. Thank you. We're back in the main interview room after the first national semifinal. See you then.